Hey, you're watching The Spark, stories that change our times, produced by Media Mobilizing Project TV. My name is Amber Marie Felton and I'll be your host for today's show. As someone who went to public school in Philadelphia and has organized for education reform with the Philadelphia Student Union, the fight for public education is really important to me. Everybody knows that the Philadelphia Public School District is in crisis. But few have heard the stories of how parents, students, and teachers are working to revive our neighborhood schools. Statewide budget cuts and district plans have drastically diminished the resources for the education our children deserve. In 2013, the School Reform Commission closed 24 schools and laid off thousands of teachers, counselors, and nurses. Neighborhood schools play a vital role in building up safe, strong, and healthy communities for all residents of Philadelphia. However, more and more in our communities, neighborhood schools are being undervalued. What will it take to make quality education a human right for every person? In this studio, we're joined by Jerry Jordan, Suzanne Sweeney, and Maurice Jones Sr. These three guests are on the front lines fighting for a public education for all. Jerry Jordan is the president of the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers. Maurice Jones Sr. is the president of Lee Elementary's Home and School Association. Suzanne Sweeney is a teacher at West Philadelphia High School. Welcome to the show. So can you start by telling us a little bit about yourselves and what role you've played in fighting for public education? Uh, I have been the president of the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers for almost seven years now. And in that role, we are advocates every day for children as well as our members. And we believe that our students' uh, learning conditions are our members' working conditions. Mm -hmm. And so that if we are able to offer a very high quality educational program for the children of Philadelphia, that uh, we're gonna have a bunch of happy teachers and other members. Mm -hmm. um, I have been fighting for uh, the public education since the 2010 school year. Um, I started as a music teacher at University City High School. Um, following that year, I was actually forced transferred out and I had the opportunity to go to West Philadelphia High School as a music teacher and I've been there for three years and um, I've been fighting for public education as every single year that I have been in this district from the start um, there have been an, a new round of uh, tremendous obstacles to overcome at the start and sometimes even the middle of the year. Well I started my journey about uh, Five, year, five or six years ago when I was in the angst of trying to find a first grade uh, for my son. And I found a great school, uh, found that it was low in resources and I just, uh, as a parent, I felt that it was my duty to um, jump in and try to find as many resources as, as possible. Uh, so I joined every group that I could. I uh, became a, a member of the associations in the neighborhood. Uh, from the Home and School Association to the Neighborhood Associations to um, uh, associations working for the betterment of public schools. Um, so it was important to me to be part of all of those groups to uh, put in the fight um, that is needed for the schools, not particularly just for my son, but for all the other schools that were in need, all the other students that were in need. Great. And why are neighborhood schools so important for our communities and for the young people in our lives? Neighborhood schools are the lifeblood of a community. And it's important for each neighborhood to have a school that is the hub of that community. Just to even add on to what Jerry said, um, the neighborhood schools are also the schools that will take any student regardless of um, any circumstance that they come from. So um, not only are they the hub of the, the entire culture and neighborhood there, but um, they're important to, to the education of every, every student, every young person in that area, just because we, we will take anybody regardless of um, any type of background. Well, I think they're the anchor of the community. Um, you can't say that your community is a great community without a great neighborhood school. And they're important because they bring vibrancy to the, the neighborhood. If you have a body that has the lungs and heart and liver and kidneys, if you take one of those away, it'll start to decay. So the neighborhood school is that. It is part of the whole ecosystem of the uh, community. Recently, you each got together to talk about the resilience and resourcefulness of parents, students, and teachers in our neighborhood schools. Let's take a look. I've been hurt too many times. 
times before and I refuse to be hurt anymore. I'm one individual student and my voice isn't heard as loud as I think it should. We came to school and they just hit us with, you're going to have new classes. We have I'm a senior at West Philadelphia High School. I just recently lost my mother, but now I live with my brother, my father, and also my best friend from school. She actually lives with me now, too. Make me love you. I'm a vocalist major. I'm a part of Philadelphia Futures, which is a college program, which helps me a whole lot. Being here at West Philadelphia High School, it's a real, real warm spot in my heart for me because it, you know, I had so many wonderful as a student at West Philadelphia High, and it pains me. We see that so much has been taken away from our schools and from our children. One of the reasons why we're coming here is because we want the world to kind of see what it's like to tour our, our schools and our neighborhoods, um, to meet the people who are teaching, to meet the young people who are learning. You know, when I was a student here, and I don't know if the students still say it, but we used to say, West is the best. And we need to get the story out about the science fair, about the music department, and the uh, you know, dedication to the arts in this school, as well as to the academic programs. I'm in a culinary program and I was in a photography program for two years. It's a really nice program and it helps you with community and communication skills and it helps you build friendships. What I love about West is how involved and engaged the teachers are with the students, how they really want us to succeed in life and they're really helping us. The thing I don't like is that with the budget cuts, the Student Success Center got taken out and that helped a lot of students, seniors, like apply to college and apply to scholarships and it's real difficult to find scholarships and colleges on your own and go through the whole process. Every year that we start to make advances as a staff, um, we learn the students, the students begin to uh, trust us as teachers, relationships are made, um, cuts are made, all of a sudden we have a whole new, let's say a half new teaching staff. We only have one counselor for the ninth and 10th graders and one counselor for the 11th and 12th graders. We are not that many teachers here, but we are very, very supportive of each other. Every single individual in this building is working together to make sure that we provide the best services that we can, we can have under all the challenges that we do have. Establishing relationship with my students and constant communication with parents, that's what is really keeping me from um, perhaps falling apart. And I would tell the mayor and the people, the powers that be, that our kids really deserve certain things. And we have this beautiful library, and what a mixed message, because we don't have a librarian. I think that a community school is the right, it's sort of the foundation of democracy. We talk about our schools like they're broken institutions that need to be fixed or discarded and thrown away or shut down. And really, instead, we need to look at them as places of, of hope and potential, which is exactly what they are. Welcome back to The Spark, stories that change our times. So, Jerry, can you talk a little bit more about the tour? What made you choose to go back to these schools in West Philadelphia? Because they're our schools. They're a part of Philadelphia. Unfortunately, there has been so much negative press about what's happening in Philadelphia schools. And uh, the schools that we were able to visit, you know, we found dedicated, very, very committed teachers, wonderful kids, which is what teachers enjoy about their jobs because they have youngsters that they interact with and they're able to support them. And the kids were excited about their education. But the youngsters also understand that the resources are not there. And we wanted to point out that in spite of the lack of resources, that uh, teachers students and administration are working really hard mm -hmm. to offer the best that they can. Mm -hmm. And we still have, in spite of what's happening, so many wonderful success stories that are just not being told. 
That's great. It's such a great clip too. Um, and what, what role does a union play to support the learning and working conditions inside of these neighborhood schools? Uh, many times people think about collective bargaining mm -hmm. and contract negotiations as uh, just unions uh, negotiating with the school district over salaries and fringe benefits. But uh, there's a lot more when you're a part of an education union. You know, we are at the table and we're fighting for nurses, we're fighting for counselors, we're fighting for librarians, we're fighting for services that we know are important for children to be successful in school. That's why we have language in the contract that requires uh, certain uh, positions to be in schools, that we have class size limits because we know that a student is not going to get the kind of uh, extra attention that he or she deserves and may very well need if they're in a huge, uh, you know, a large uh, class mm -hmm. size. So therefore, those are the kinds of things uh, that we talk about. So it's not uh, what many people think. Thank you. And Suzanne, you were in the video as well. Um, we heard you say that every year there's a new round of cuts that impact staffing, making each school year unpredictable and inconsistent. How has this affected your own ability to build relationships with your students and support their growth? Um, to start off, I taught one of my first years at University City High School. Um, I really enjoyed the school. It was actually the first year of Promise Academies. Mm. Um, so I was interviewed along with a bunch of very um, spirited teachers who had taken on the mission of the school and were really dedicated to helping um, serve the students of the school and help them academically achieve. And for me, um, build up a music program. And me and my, uh, my coworker, we worked really hard. We actually turned the program from, from essentially nothing to having a small band in a, in a choral performance. By the end of the year, we got hit with budget cuts and over half of the staff was actually transfer, forced transferred out of the school and I was one of them. So even though I wanted to stay and, and finish what I had started and keep the relationships going with some of the students, I had to leave and there was actually gonna be another person coming in to take my place. Um, I was devastated, I was really upset, I loved the school and I had to start over and the relationships I'd made with kids um, was just going to stop there. Fortunately I, I was able to get a job at West Philadelphia High School and uh, again I've been fortunate enough to be there for three years which is a feat in itself um, with all the issues with layoffs going on and I've personally witnessed at the end of every year just the terror that goes around the building with teachers wondering who's going to get laid off, with students wondering, is my teacher going to be here? When notices of layoffs went out, by the end of the year, I had students telling me that besides me, every single teacher on their roster was not going to be there next year. And working in a school like West Philadelphia High School, I've learned that the students are really, um, they're really big on trust. It takes a long time for them to develop trust in an individual, but once you earn it, they are, they are loyal to you forever. And so, and I understand every single year, we're getting a whole new round of teaching staff and the students, unfortunately, have to get used to a whole new round of people that are there and they care for them, but it's, there's a very large um, learning curve that takes a couple months for that trust to, to, to establish while um, learning could have been taking place with the, with the teachers that wanted to stay there. Thank you for sharing those experiences with us. Now let's watch more from Revival from the Roots and hear from our third guest, Maurice Jones Sr., a parent and the president of Lee Elementary's Home and School Association. We as parents, you know what I mean, we have to, you know, we're the voice. You have to step up. They're our future. You know, each and every one of these children are our future. Well, my child, um, he's... 12 years old now. He started in um, first grade at John Berry. Um, there has been a lot of changes, you know, from first grade to sixth grade, but um, he's overcome a lot of those changes. He likes his teacher. Um, he's very in tune with the students. And um, he loves me being there because I'm always there every day. There are so many interested parents who want what 
every parent wants, and that's the best education for their children. Parents do care, they are involved, they want to be more involved in making sure that the schools have the resources that their children need to be successful. Teachers are left with um, having less resources to help uh, educate the children. There's something called white gold, and that's paper. And I'm buying paper all the time. You monitor that staple sale just yes. like I do, don't you? Yes. And people were asking me all the time, what should I buy a teacher? And I said, a ream of paper. Oh, a ream of no. And, <laughs> and when they bring it in, the look on the teacher's face to almost tears because they got some reams of paper. That is, you know, it's criminal. There has been a lot of things that have been taken, taken out of the public schools and I'm thinking like, okay, um, what is my son really learning? I have had to uh, go to outsource resources, making sure that my son gets uh, the adequate um, education that he needs and uh, is horrifying. Parents are now filling gaps that were never imagined before. Like I thought it was crazy we were funding an art teacher or trying to raise money to fund an art program. We are now regularly bringing paper into the schools. Uh, schools have funded their secretaries, their counselors, there's nurses. But there are schools throughout the city that don't have that luxury. We've always been at the forefront. It's not us that needs to, to step up. It's the politicians, it's the um, district, it's the state government, um, it's the city government. They're the ones that have been lacking. The parents have always been there. The teachers have always been there. We just want a good education. We want our kids to be good people. It's as simple as that. It's been an amazing opportunity to hear from so many people who are really living the consequences of uh, underfunding schools, but also doing extraordinary things and, and show us why public schools are meaningful. We need to bring back humanity and a sense of love and caring and a sense of collective responsibility to our schools. Really, really listening to the students and to the teachers and to the parents tells me I've got to do more to continue to fight with the parents and with the students in order to make this school district and these schools the kind of schools that were available in Philadelphia when I was a student. What do you leave for the students who are going to come after you? What do you leave for them? What do you want for them? If they can have twice the support that I have now, that would be phenomenal. I just want for them to know that education is a key. Welcome back to The Spark, stories that change our times. So Maurice, can you talk more about the role that your children's school plays in your community? And despite all these challenges, why do you choose to send your kids to a public school? Well, the main reason is um, for a great education. Uh, I, I checked out the school. Uh, I looked at numbers online. Um, the numbers didn't match what's in the school. Uh, because I got into school, met teachers, and found out the teachers were fantastic. There were some kids that didn't have the resources that they need to perform like my son has. Um, so that's what became my role. Um, so that's why I started participating in the school and becoming home and school president and part of Parents United and West Philadelphia Coalition for Neighborhood Schools and Garden Court Community Association. Um, the school is the core of the community. There is no separation between the two. Um, so that's what the, a neighborhood school is and that's what all schools should be. We heard you say in the video that parents have always been at the forefront and that it's the lack of support from politicians that's the problem. Tell us more about the leadership role parents play in strengthening neighborhood schools and their communities. Well, parents are, uh, parents and teachers and the students have always been there. And every time there's a new reform, uh, it pitters away, and then we're still there, the parents, the teachers, and the students. And uh, we never get the say. Um, they look at us with blank stares as we testify. They never remember what we said. They'll be gone in a couple years, and then a new crew will come in, and then they'll do the same thing. We have the answers. We know what's going on, and we support our schools 
um, but they never listened to us. And that's why we're at the point that we're in now. So opening that question up about decision makers to all of our guests, who are the decision makers right now in our public schools and what are their priorities? Uh, the uh, School Reform Commission was put in place because they, uh, the governor believed that the Philadelphia public school system was fiscally and academically bankrupt. They were put in place in order to change both of those things. Unfortunately, I think that uh, the history will show us that uh, they have not done that. They have not done that job. And we have the largest deficit now than we've ever had in the history of the school district of Philadelphia. And um, you know, our students have less services now than they've ever had also. You know, our schools had counselors in every school full time prior to the School Reform Commission coming in. Uh, we had nurses in many, many schools, but our nurses now uh, carry a ratio of one nurse for every 1,500 children. Many nurses are visiting more than one school per day. Some are going to three and four schools and aren't being able, aren't able to really uh, provide the kinds of services for children that they would like to do. And uh, the arts programs, uh, the arts and the music programs have been eliminated from so many schools. Uh, we have 212 schools and we have 14 librarians. That is what the SRC has overseen. Do either of you want to speak a little bit more to the School Reform Commission and how you've seen that group fail our children and also maybe some experiences you've had with them? Um, the people mean well, uh, but they're in a situation where their allegiance is not to the students or the teachers or the parents. Their allegiance is to whom that um, places them in that position. Being an entity that really has no direct involvement with the school. They're an overseer, but they're not a direct involvement with the school function. Um, they really don't understand the schools. And what is needed is um, a local involvement, is a, a local control of that, whether that be for the total city or um, <clears throat> different entities within um, different areas. There are five members of the School Reform Commission three of them are appointed by the governor. So the governor controls the School Reform Commission and the other two are appointed by the mayor of the city of Philadelphia. And at this time, during this crisis, there are privately funded organizations such as the Philadelphia School Partnership that have emerged claiming to be the solution for budget shortfalls. Do you think private interests should influence publicly funded schools? Absolutely not. Children are not widgets, and we should not begin to use a business model when we think about educating children. Uh, it's just wrong, it will always be wrong, and will never succeed. What a business does is there's winners and losers. There are no losers in children. There are no losers in parents or, or teachers. We don't believe in losers. Um, we are all educating all of our children. So when you have a model that um, is based on winners or losers, um, that is not fitting into an education system. We need to have everyone educated, regardless of what their circumstances are, where they come from, what their uh, issues that may, they may have at home or in a community. We need a model that is going to teach all of the children. So moving away from that business model, what would it look like for parents, students, and teachers to have decision-making power in how our schools are run? It looks sane, um, instead of the insanity that is going on now. Because as a parent, I have a stake in what happens. Uh, someone that doesn't have a child in a public school, an average public school, really has no um, stake in it. Um, it's similar to Lisa Del Pitt's uh, other people's children. That's how they treat um, other people's children. 
um, their child would get the best of the best. But those other kids, they'll do all right with that. Yeah, I, I just want to piggyback off of that. Um, for me, teaching at a school, um, I, would, I would wager that any person that came into our school and asked the teacher what we need to make our school succeed uh, better or differently, we would know. Um, I, I guarantee you that if you ask any student, thing, especially a senior, things that they're lacking that they need to be more successful, they'll know. And so do many of the parents. And to me, it's the difference between um, making educated decisions or not. Um, it's a decision between having a thriving school or not. If you don't understand where the needs are, then the problem is not going to get solved. And with this whole winners and losers model attached to schools, um, you know, you're not attacking the root of the problem. And I'm, I'm, I very much believe that. Um, you can put bandages on these problems, which I feel like happens every couple of years. We get a new little small solution, but we're not, we're not going to the root of what's necessary, what teachers need, what students need, what parents need, and what resources we need to, to make our schools succeed better. And moving towards this model and these successful schools, what can we all do, us here and our viewers, what can we do to make that happen? What next steps? I think we um, become involved. Um, we have the power. Um, parents, uh, teachers can't do it alone, students can't do it alone. Parents are important in that mix. So parents can come in and say, this is what I want, this is what I demand. Um, that's what I've done at uh, my son's school. And I think just public awareness is another key to what's going on. When I talk to my family and friends about the working conditions that are being proposed or even that have been implemented in the last couple of years, they, they can't believe it. You know. The more people that are, oh, that are aware of what's going on in Philadelphia and will talk about it and spread the word, hopefully it'll catch the ear of somebody that can actually make, um, can be, get involved or, or make an educated decision that will help impact our schools in a positive way. And we need to get rid of the failing school um, uh, moniker that is being put out. There's no failing schools, there's only people that have failed the school and those are the adults. Um, so none of the kids are failures. Um, they're little geniuses within little packages that need to be opened, and that's what we need to do. As citizens, we have to speak out, and we have to stop allowing the closure of our neighborhood schools and for our schools, as Marie said, to be labeled as failures when what has actually happened is that the School Reform Commission has starved those schools of the resources they need in order to provide the supports for youngsters and to give them the opportunity to be successful in their neighborhood schools. Uh, but if we don't stop what's happening now, there will always be, under the rules of the business model, the losers. Mm -hmm. and our kids aren't losers. Right. Our teachers are working hard every day in every community, and they're not losers either. Thank you so much for being on our show. It was great to meet you all. Thank you for watching The Spark, Stories That Change Our Times, produced by Media Mobilizing Project TV. For more stories about everyday people who are leading the way to winning our human rights, visit us online at thespark.tv.